Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For today's episode, we'll be looking at the topic of implicitly forbidden, specifically the topic of dancing. When we read the Bible, there are many things that are explicit. We have thou shalt or thou shalt nots. That makes it easy for us to know what is right and wrong. When we have a thou shalt, that means it's right and we do it. When we have a thou shalt not, that means it's wrong and we don't do it. However, just because the Bible doesn't explicitly call something sin doesn't automatically make it righteous. If something that we do looks like an explicit sin, then it is just as sinful. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read verses 19 to 21. Galatians 5, beginning at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I also have told you in times past, that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We read here there's a list of sins. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, there's a similar list of sins. And Paul says, if you do these things, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. But just in case the Galatians came away with saying, well, those are the only sins, he put at the end, and such like. In other words, if there is something that you do that looks like these sins, it is just as sinful. These are what we call implicit sins. The word implicit means capable of being understood from something else, though not explicitly expressed. In other words... There are sins which look like or involve other sins, and those would be sinful. In the last episode, we looked at pornography and found out that it's just another form of lust, which is sinful. Today, we're going to discuss the topic of dancing. In Old Testament days, dancing was a form of praise that did not mix the sexes nor excite the libido. I don't know what that dancing looked like. But I personally haven't seen anything like it in the world today. That is not what modern dancing is. Modern dancing, from the country line dance to that done in, uh, to other types of music, is absolutely nothing but a mimicry of the sex act put to music, a private, which is a private act reserved for the mar- marriage bed. In Hebrews chapter 13, in Hebrews chapter 13, we're going to read verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Sex, and anything like sex, is reserved for marriage and in the privacy of marriage. It's not a public act. If the band were not playing in the background, such movements and such positions would be considered scandalous. The Bible says they are anyway, even if society says, well, really not. The Bible says they are anyway. Listed among the evident or explicit works of the flesh is lewdness. Lewdness, from the Greek aselgeia, is defined by Thayer as wanton acts or manners as filthy words, indecent bodily movements, unchaste handling of males and females. Apply the latter part of this definition, and you would believe that Thayer when he defined this, was watching the modern dance as he pinned it. Modern dancing is lewdness. Such is improper for the Christian and will prevent him from inheriting the kingdom of God. Galatians 5.21 tells us that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So knowing this, let's refrain not only from the explicit sins we find in the Bible, but from implicit sins that are just like the explicit sins. We need to act like the peculiar people that God expects. The Bible is not implicit, though, on what we must do to be saved. If you are not a Christian, the brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you can hear the word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at torontoeastendchurchofchrist at gmail.com. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. Searching the Scriptures has been brought to you by the East End Church of Christ, which meets at 3601 Victoria Park Avenue, Suite 200, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Our hours of service are Sunday at 10 a.m. for Bible study and 11 a.m. for morning worship, as well as Wednesday at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study. 
If you have any Bible questions that you would like to have answered during this podcast, you may email them to Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. That's Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Finally, if you'd like to catch up on any episode that you missed, you will find them at www.eastendchurch.org under the podcast tab found on the main page. I hope you found the few minutes that we spent together today useful in expanding your knowledge of what the Bible teaches. Please join me, the Lord willing, again in the next episode when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Until you listen again, keep searching the Scriptures to learn what God wants you to do. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.